The Turkish president, Rajab Tayyip Erdogan, has said Saudi Arabia has the greatest responsibility to resolve the Gulf dispute. He made his comments as he started two days of shuttle diplomacy in the region. President Erdogan is visiting Saudi Arabia and Kuwait on Sunday before going on to Qatar on Monday. And he says it appears Qatar is committed to what he calls a rational policy. Kuwait plays an important role in the region and is making important mediation efforts as it did in the year 2000 and 2014. I will go to Qatar on Monday to discuss with the Emir ideas that will solve the Gulf crisis. We'll also discuss other issues such as Syria, Yemen, Libya and anti-terrorism issues. Since the beginning of the Gulf crisis, Qatar has committed itself to a prudent, rational policy. As you know, we've been able to achieve constructive dialogue and good cooperation with Qatar. Well, the EU's foreign policy chief, Federica Mogherini, will also be in the region. She's expected to meet the Kuwaiti Emir in Kuwait City on Sunday. Kuwait is mediating the dispute between Qatar and the blockading countries. Uh, let's talk to Rami Khoury now, who's a senior fellow at the American University in Beirut. Um, starting with uh, President Erdogan, he's making his, his uh, affiliation quite clear, isn't he? Saying that Saudi Arabia has the greatest responsibility to solve this dispute and that Qatar is pursuing what he calls a rational and prudent policy. Yes, uh, Turkey has been pretty clear about this. They have a military base in Qatar. They're trying to develop greater uh, economic ties with everybody in the region. Um, and they are a major regional power, but they're a non-Arab power. So Turkey and Iran have huge uh, connections, interests, um, and activities all across the Arab world and it's not realistic to expect uh, them to just stay out of this and they try to play a constructive role uh, if they can but so, they are seen to be so, uh, so, closer to Qatar. All right so that obviously leads on to how much leverage, uh, how much influence will President Erdogan have in Riyadh? Well I don't think he has a lot of influence but I think it's possible that he may have um, links with Qatar that he could develop and to play a, a regional uh, role in terms of uh, political support for a negotiated solution. The Turks have uh, interests in Syria, they have links with Muslim Brotherhood groups, so there's many dimensions to Turkey's relations with people all across the region. It shouldn't be seen narrowly in terms of Qatar and Saudis and uh, and Emiratis only, but I think it's a good thing that the Turks are trying to play uh, a mediating role, and I think it's in everybody's interest to resolve this uh, uh, tension and and then get on with the business of developing economic ties and more political and media liberalization, if possible. Um, and then add to the mix uh, Federica Mogherini of the European Union, also in Kuwait. Everybody, it seems, uh, quite anxious to prop up the, the Kuwaiti uh, effort at mediation. Yes, the, the Europeans are like a sleeping giant. You know, they have massive interests in this region. They have tremendous uh, stake in uh, promoting um, stability, economic development, um, etc., all across the region for, for many, many uh, reasons, but uh, they've never played a political role that is commensurate uh, with their economic and security interests in this region. Um, so if, if the Europeans can get more actively involved, they could, for instance, could play a role in um, not guaranteeing so much, but perhaps following up an agreement that is eventually going to be reached between Qatar and the other GCC countries. Um, they could perhaps play a monitoring role, a follow-up role, um, and I think most people would welcome that. So let's hope that the Europeans, you know, do more than just come and, and, and have a chat with people, that they actually engage. The Germans have started to do this bilaterally with the Qataris in terms of uh, sending experts from their intelligence service to look at uh, finances in Qatar, which the Qataris have accepted uh, to do. So, the, so getting Europe involved, I think, is a huge step. Also, it kind of... Uh, supplements the American involvement. The Americans have taken a big step forward now with Tillerson publicly saying that the, the blockading countries should s remove their land blockade, um, their land siege of Qatar uh, as, a, as a step because Qatar is uh, doing 
uh, important things to address the issues that have been raised. So the Europeans can supplement the Americans in a very good way because American policy is a little bit unclear still to a lot of people given the uh, confusion that seems to reign in Washington and many foreign policy issues. Yes, and given all of the uh, various permutations that we've witnessed over the seven weeks, would you agree that the heat has been taken out of this dispute? Uh, would you agree with President Erdogan that detente is near? I would agree that we are shifting towards a a path to a negotiated resolution, yes. I think it's clear that the Saudis and the Emiratis, and they're the only two that really count. The other ones who are with the sieging countries are, are secondary dependent players. But the Saudis and Emiratis have recognized that they're just not getting anywhere that the whole world has not joined them. Nobody of serious stature in the entire world has backed the Saudi Emirati position, whereas Qatar has had significant assistance, practical as well as political, from major countries all over the world, public statements from the U.S. that the Qataris are, are uh, doing good things, and, and a, a whole fleet of, of mediators coming from major countries all over the world trying to get a peaceful settlement and end the blockade. So the, the, Sakata, the Emiratis and Saudis have clearly realized that they've got to be more realistic, and they have presented these six principles replacing the nonsensical 13 non-negotiable demands, which are non-existent uh, demands now. Uh, the Qataris, for their part, have responded also with the Emir's a speech the other day, clearly signaling they want a negotiated resolution, they want to address the issues of uh, terrorism, friendly relations, non-interference, proportional responses to political disputes. Qatar is, is on record saying these are all things that it accepts and is willing to negotiate. So we have now the outlines of a, a mechanism uh, or principles to negotiate on. All we need is the credible mediators uh, that can use a little muscle as well as some good sensible talk to move the parties to that process. That will take a little bit of time because everybody needs to be able to back down from some of their extreme positions and save face, save honor, come out of this saying that they achieved their goals, they preserved their sovereignty and their dignity, and that's a win-win situation, and that's why we have mediators in this world. Rami Khoury, thank you.